please stand as you're able and join me in our opening hymn of praise, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather one more time to worship you 
and to praise your name. Please help us to remember in the midst of daily struggles, times of great tribulation, sickness and death, that you are God, that you are on the throne, that you are in control. In spite of the difficulties that we have, Lord, help us to bring praise to our lips. Help us to be grateful and to thank you for the many blessings that you have given to us. Help us to remember the great sacrifice that you made so that we might live. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please join us now as we worship in song, hymn 369, Blessed Assurance, please stand as you're able. Amen. Please join me now in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, also found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, I'm Jasmine Smothers, and I'm the lead pastor here at Atlanta First United Methodist Church, and it is my joy and my honor to welcome you to worship in this place. We know that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. I want to um, invite you to fill out the connect cards that are found in your bulletin. On one side, it lets us know that you're here. That is so important to us. We need to know that you are here, and we want to know that we are he you are here. We want to be able to follow up with you um, because relationships are at the heart of the ministry that we do here at Atlanta First. I also want to invite you to flip that connect card over so that you can engage in many of the ministries of this church. Church. At Atlanta First, we exist to worship God, to serve people, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta. That's what we do here. And this week, you have an opportunity to serve through our ministry at Safe House. You have an opportunity to grow through a small group or Sunday school class. And like uh, you heard from Elisa this morning, we've got Easter egg hunts and Palm Sunday and so many um, opportunities for you to engage in worship and engage in the city. Um, please take that opportunity to find out more about how you might get engaged in the life of this congregation. And when the offering plates come around, please drop the connect cards in the offering plates. We also want to um, welcome our first-time visitors and those who are visiting this city um, this week. Know that while you are here in this city, that you have a family that is here to take care of you. So if there's anything that you need while you're visiting the city of Atlanta, please let us know, and we will be happy to help get you situated this morning. We also um, want to recognize our clergy that are among us this morning. The Reverend Dr. Carol Norton Helton is with us um, this, this morning, and she's just been such a stabilizing factor for us um, since Pastor Robert's passing and has been teaching Bible study and helping in so many ways. So we're thrilled that you're back in worship with us today. And, um, and the Reverend Carla Daniel um, is here. She is the daughter of the North Georgia Conference, but currently serving in Alabama, West Florida, and her husband Judson, and we're so thrilled to have you today. These are my Florida family folks when I escaped to the babies in Florida. Y'all have heard me talk about Lila and Wells. These are their parents, <laughs> so we're so thrilled uh, to have them here today, and so many, so many more family and friends that I see among us. I see some folks today, too, who we haven't seen in a while, so I want to say welcome home to you as well. As we look toward prayer time this morning, we want to lift up our children and remember that it is our custom on first Sundays to have our children in worship so that we might learn how to worship together and how the sacraments and all of those um, pieces of worship go together. We also want to continue to lift up the McMichael family. I think everybody's aware now that our assistant pastor for worship and uh, outreach ministries passed suddenly two weeks ago tomorrow, and um, we want you to continue to lift up his family. Many of you heard in my Thursday thoughts this week that there are some financial needs for that family, and we want to encourage you to give generously to toward that fund as well. Also, continue to remember um, the Cunningham family and Dr. Timothy Cunningham, one of our own who's missing and um, has been missing for about a month now. And um, we're, 
We're praying for his safe return. His family was with us last week, and we want to continue to pray for him and to pray for the new search that's being launched today um, here in the city for his family. Also, um, remember the fam- Hubert Davis uh, and his family in prayer. You guys know we've been praying for his great-great-niece, Tabitha Finley. She passed away on Monday of this week, so we want to continue to lift, her, uh, to lift that family in prayer. Friends, it's prayer time. It's a time where we get to come together to share our joys and our concerns, to bring them to God and to expect that God is listening. So you're invited to the altar rail at this time as we prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer. God of grace and God of glory. Thank you for allowing us into this, your house of worship, one more time. We thank you for the gift of this beautiful day. We thank you that you saw fit to wake us up and to breathe the breath of life into us, O oh God. We thank you that you allowed us to make it from our homes and into this, your sanctuary of worship, of praise, of thanksgiving, and of service here in this city, oh God. We thank you that you have brought us through another week. And while, oh God, it may not have been the week that we expected it might be, we know that you have been in the midst of every step we've taken and every breath we've taken. And so we give you thanks and praise, oh God. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you in the midst of our grief. We praise you in the midst of our suffering. We praise you in the midst of not understanding everything that's going on around us, oh God. We praise you when things are crazy. We praise you when things are wonderful and going exactly the way that we might want them to go. And oh God, some come with very heavy hearts needing and expecting a word from you, expecting you to show up in mighty and miraculous ways so that we might know that we know that we know that you are still working on our behalf and that you are still God and you are God alone and you don't need our help being God. Lord, we pray for all of those who grieve. We pray for all who are sick. We pray for those who do not know where their next meal is coming from. And we ask you to allow us to be your tangible presence in the midst of those who need you to draw near, oh God. We lift up the McMichael family. We pray for Dr. Timothy Cunningham and his family and expect his safe return, oh God. We pray for the Chandler family and for the Davis family. We pray as we celebrated Marley Franklin's birthday last week, oh God, and we give thanks that you are still in the healing business, that cancer never has the last word, oh God, but that you are still working in and through and among and around us. We thank you for the friend that we have in you, oh God. We thank you that we don't walk this journey all by ourselves. 
We thank you for the leaders of our church, our bishop and our district superintendent. We thank you for our staff care team and our leadership team, oh God. We thank you for our staff and our day school and our families and we ask that you would continue to lead us and guide us in the ways that you have set forth for this community. And God, we pray for our country. We pray for this world. We pray for our leaders. Oh God, we pray that when we live in a time where we, we, we talk about and celebrate our nuclear weapons, oh God, that you are in the midst of it all, that there is no need to fear because you are still in charge. We pray that you would make us a nation that follows you, oh God. That you would help us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. Lord, you teach us in the word that Jesus turned the tables over in the temple when we had made the temple something that was not pleasing to you. So during this Lenten season, if there is anything in us that needs to be turned over, Oh God, have your way. It is in Jesus Christ's holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. As those who gathered at the altar rail return to their seats, we prepare ourselves for offering. You are invited to give generously for every dollar and every cent that you give goes to the mission of this church to make disciples of Jesus Christ, to worship God, to serve God's people, to grow together and to engage the city. None of that happens without your support. And so we invite you to honor God with the gifts that God has given you by returning them generously to him.
Amen. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. Aren't you glad about that this morning? Isn't that worthy of a praise to God this morning that God doesn't get caught up in our stuff the way we get caught up in our stuff? But God just allows us and ministers to us in amazing and graceful ways. And for that, we are exceedingly, exceedingly glad. Here we are in the middle of our 40 days in the Lenten season, the season in which we are asked to slow down, take a break, be still, hold up a mirror in the presence of God to ourselves and say, God, what is happening in us and through us that needs some tweaking or some changing, or some ejecting, so we can be the people that you have called us to be. And we've been talking this Lent about the great escape, what it means to escape from me, me, me-ville, and what I want and what I need, to, and to escape to God and where God wants us to be and where God is calling us to be. So today we enter the third section of this series called um, From Familiarity to Foolishness. And I wrote this beautiful sermon about Jesus turning over tables in the temple, but the Holy Spirit has changed the plan. So y'all pray this morning. <laughs> And get out your Bibles, your electronic devices, um, whatever is in your, in your, their Bibles in your pews, and turn to the Old Testament near the very front. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 17, Exodus chapter 17, beginning in the first verse. We're going to hang out with the Israelites this morning. They have been wandering around in the wilderness, and we've had to talk a lot about wilderness this Lenten season, Claudia. God has sort of launched us into our own place of wilderness, and we're learning what it means to face God in the wilderness. And in Exodus chapter 17, the Israelites have been wandering around for a minute, but they've been wandering around long enough to know that God keeps God's promises. And they've been wandering around long enough to know better that when they have a need, that God is going to supply that need. But they're not very different from us because it seems like, no, it doesn't matter how many times God works a miracle in our lives or around us. It doesn't seem like how many times God provides a need. We seem to forget when we get to a hard place again. You know that old phrase, between a rock and a hard place? <laughs> And that's where the Israelites find themselves when we encounter them in Exodus chapter 17. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses. Anybody ever quarreled with a leader before? Mm, if you can't say amen, you can say ouch. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses replied, why do you fight with me? Why do you put the Lord, your God, to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there. And they grumbled against Moses, and they said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt, out of slavery, to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I supposed to do with your people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. 
I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship, here we are to bow down, here we are to say that you are indeed our worthy and our holy God. Oh Lord, we did not show up this morning for a word from Jasmine, but we've come to this place expecting a word from you. So Holy Spirit, speak, speak, oh God, speak to our hearts and our minds and our souls so that when we leave this place, we are not the same as when we came in. And take this here servant, hide her behind that old rugged cross, so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O oh God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Uh, have you ever been in a car with a bunch of children before? <laughs> Well, you guys know that my favorite name is Auntie Jazz, Auntie Jazzy, Aunt Jasmine, whichever one fits whichever set of children. And you know that I like to pile all the kids up in the car and take them places. Um, Mothers of those children are here today, and they know that we like to go on trips and go do fun things. We like to go to the aquarium, maybe even Disney World. And you get a little bit down the road, and somebody says, Auntie Jazzy, I'm hungry. Or or somebody says, Auntie Jazz, I'm thirsty. Or somebody says, Aunt Jasmine, I got a party. And, and, and you've, just, you've just got in the groove, you know, you're just hitting your stride, you just found your way, you got down 75 South and you missed the bulk of the traffic and you're rolling and all of a sudden somebody needs something. Well, can you make it one or two more exits? I gotta go now. Or maybe it's not children in the car. Maybe you lead a team at work, and every time you think you've got everybody moving toward the same goal, or every time you think you've got everybody on the same page, every time you think you've got this thing, somebody somewhere has a complaint or a requirement that derails progress. This is where we are with the Israelites today. They're watching through, marching through the wilderness on their way to the promised land, and they think they've gotten over the bulk of it, and Moses is starting to relax a little bit because for five seconds they've stopped complaining, and all the children are marching in the right direction together. They've seen miracles. God has given them manna from heaven. God has provided every need over and over and over again. They're not new to this. And then somebody says, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? I'm thirsty. There's no water out here. Do you know there's no water out here? We're in the middle of the desert. Everybody starts saying, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Moses, we're thirsty. What you going to do? In the middle of the desert, in the middle of the wilderness, 
in the middle of all hell breaking loose, in the middle of the troops grumbling, in the middle of the inmates running the asylum, in the middle of grief, in the middle of pain, in the middle of suffering, when your pastor suddenly dies, when you lose your job, when you don't know where you're going to eat, it feels like you are thirsty and there is nowhere to go for water. You see, we're familiar with grumbling. Needing something is a familiarity in our life. Expecting something like water, which we need to live, is a familiarity in our lives. But when we don't have it, we act like we have lost our minds. So here we are in the middle of the Lenten season, and a lot of us have forgotten what we decided we were going to do for Lent to get closer to God. And a lot of us are trying to beat ourselves over our heads because we gave up Coca-Cola. And, you know, I just had to have that Coke last Sunday because, Pastor, you said that Sundays are many Easter's, and I could take a break on Sundays, but it sent me right on off on a binge. And I've been on Cokes all week, and I need to try to get my way because I promised God but we're familiar with that and we like what's familiar we need things to be familiar for us and to us and around us it gives us a sense of security it gives us a place to feel grounded and yet the word of God during the Lenten season and for the people called Christian is don't get stuck in the familiar the familiar will kill you Keep on griping about every little thing. See how it messes with your soul and your spirit. And, And then it'll start messing with your health. Keep on doing the same old, same old, same old thing just because that's what you're used to doing and see how it stifles the very breath in your body. Moses said to God, what am I supposed to do? (laughs) What is it that I should do? You provided for us before, but I don't see a way out of this. I don't see what is ahead of us. There is no water anywhere to be found. And if I don't get these people something to drink, they're going to revolt and they might even kill me or they might overthrow me or we all might just die. What am I to do? And and I can't imagine that God doesn't just laugh for a half second. You know, just just kind (laughs) of, Moses, come on, you know better than this. (laughs) Can't you imagine that sometimes God looks at us and says, really? You going to take yourself over that? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know about the God that you serve? Don't you remember when I brought you out of slavery in the first place that I already promised you and I have already proven to you and shown you that I have provided for every need that you have? He said, Moses... You have what you need in your hands. Remember that staff 
the one you're holding right now, the one that you hiked over here with so you could get away and talk to me, that staff that you're holding, remember that that's the same staff that you threw down on the ground and snakes came and Pharaoh let my people go. Don't you remember that that's the very same staff that you held in your hand? You put it in the middle of the Red Sea and people walked across on dry land. Do you know who you are? Don't you you know that you have everything you need? He said, take the staff and strike that rock. How many of you are between a rock and a hard place in your life today? How many of you don't know which way is forward and you're wondering if God remembers who you are? How many of you are waiting? What in the world is next? What is going to happen next in life? How am I supposed to keep waking up every day and keep putting one foot in front of another? You have everything that you need. So Moses, Robin, Moses, he gathered up the elders so that there would be some witnesses to this crazy foolishness that God was about to do. And he gathered up some elders and he gathered up some witnesses and he took them to this rock that God said strike. And I know they thought that Moses was crazy and it's okay with me if people think I'm crazy every now and then because I'd rather be walking in God's foolishness than in my familiarity. He said, come and see what the Lord is about to do. Aaron, the staff care team showed up. SPR showed up at the rock. The executive leadership team showed up at the rock. The trustees showed up at the rock. They all showed up at the rock. Jill, the finance committee showed up at the rock. And Moses took that same staff that got them out of slavery and delivered them. And he struck that rock and water came everywhere. And you got to know that this isn't a little bit of water. Y'all, these are millions of people who need something to drink. Water is everywhere. So is God among us or not? Is God with us or not? Is God for us or not? Is God providing or not? Over and over again this week, I heard, Pastor, what are we going to do? Pastor Robert is gone. What are we going to do? Are we going to be okay? Moses marked that place. He marked it. The Lord is with us. So that's the word of the Lord for all of us today. Don't you think if there's water from a rock, Jerry, in the middle of a desert, when the people have given up, don't you believe that God is with us right here, right now, today? See, the thing about the people of God is that we love a good story about a miracle. But we never want to be in a place where we have to expect a miracle. And that is what God is calling each and every one of us to do. Move from familiarity of just, oh, woe is me, what's going to happen? I don't know what's going on. We know that story, don't we? Who's going to pay those bills? We know that story. And move to the foolishness. Escape to the foolishness of expecting a miracle. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.
Friends, I want to invite our SPRC chair to join me this morning. She has uh, some announcements to make as we move into communion time and into the call for Christian discipleship. Many of us do wonder what God is going to do in this place and what is next. And I believe that God has called water from a rock on our behalf. Hello, my name is Natalie Smith and I lead the staff for staff parish relations care team. Um, that means that we head up taking care of people. Um, we want to thank God first for this season. We know that he is right here with us. Um, Atlanta First would um, first like to offer thanks to our district superintendent, Dr. Bernice Kirkland, and the entire conference for their continued support of our church through this unexpected season. They have stepped up in wonderful ways that um, we all owe them a debt of gratitude, so th say thank you when you see her next week. I'd also like to offer a big, 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 big thank you to Pastor Jasmine and all of our leadership teams um, as the incredible service that they give daily behind the scenes, in front of the scenes to bring God's will here. Okay, talking about people, we have some very big shoes to fill. I want to give a couple of updates for our staffing plan. While we cannot replace Pastor Robert, we can continue to work towards fulfilling his vision for this congregation. For our worship needs, Jadrian and Kyle have graciously agreed to lead in the interim. Uh, we will begin our search for a full-time worship director starting next week. For our pastoral needs, uh, we've got uh, some good news on that front. Pastor Jonathan Brown will be appointed as our new assistant pastor effective next week. His primary duties will be to serve and, gr and grow the vision area. So he will be working on service and growth. Uh, we're so excited to be getting him. Jonathan Brown is a lifelong member of the United Methodist Church. He is currently a student at Candler School of Theology. He's in his uh, last year. He is the husband of Reverend Dr. Katie Hinman, pastor of the College Park United Methodist Church. He has been on the staff at seven different United Methodist churches in this area, including Ben Hill, Hapeville, Zor, Decatur First, Maple Avenue, Coosa, and Chicopee United Methodist Churches. He is the son of two United Methodist ministers. He holds a Master's of Art in Religious Studies with a focus in New Testament from the University of Georgia. Go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, he attended Young Harris College and Brevard College to obtain his Bachelor's of Arts in Religious Studies. He is a self-professed nerd who loves gaming. He loves Star Wars, professional wrestling, and all kinds of video games. He is also a diehard Atlanta Falcons fan. Please welcome him with us next Sunday. Uh, Dr. Bernice Kirkland will be here to deliver our sermon and our message, and then we will hold a welcome reception directly afterwards again for um, Jonathan Brown. So we're so glad to have him. Thank you all for all the work that everyone here is doing to help support our church and God's will. And if you need anything, please let us know. Thank you. Friends, God continues to bring water from a rock for us. This marks a huge season of transition for us, and we will continue to move forward in the vision that God has planned. Um, you will get an email from me tomorrow morning about these plans and other things that are in the works to help us move forward. Um, we owe a debt of gratitude to our district superintendent, our bishop, and our annual conference who are supporting us during this season. And in doing that, it is... Um, it's bittersweet. Um, it's bittersweet because no one expected... Um, to have to be doing this. And when our superintendent called me last Monday and said, I need you to get here, I need to see you, I need to make sure that Atlanta First is okay, and I need to make sure that you are okay, um, nobody expected that we would need that opportunity. And God keeps showing up for us. God has sent us Dr. Helton and so many folks um, who continue to pour out. I get messages every day from the clergy and lay people around this annual conference and around the world who are praying for you 
and praying for your church and praying for your pastor. And I don't think, we don't believe in accidents, right? <laughs> and we don't believe in coincidences. And the fact that all of this is happening during the Lenten season when we're talking about how important it is to draw close to God so that we can be the people that God has called us to be. That we have the opportunity to escape to God and to lean not on our own understanding and to expect water from a rock. So we have the great blessing of celebrating at the Lord's table today. And I'm going to um, ask Dr. Helton and Reverend Daniel if they'll join me uh, as we celebrate Holy Communion. And we remember that this is not, this is not Atlanta First Table. This is not the United Methodist Church's table. This is not Pastor Jasmine's table. But this is God's table. And Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. I'm on page 12 uh, in the hymnal so that you can follow along with me this morning. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear this good news. Christ died for you while you were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. 
By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the table is set, and you are invited to come and to receive this incredible gift from God. Please follow the direction of the ushers as they will invite you to the altar rail. You will come placing your hand in the sign of a cross because this is a gift that you receive. You cannot earn it, and you cannot disearn it. <laughs> but it is given freely to you by our almighty God, who loves you so much that he might bring you to this place on this day, so that you might recharge for the days ahead. You'll receive a wafer, and you will receive a cup, and then you will be instructed to take and eat as we share in this holy family meal together. Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? There are gluten-free wafers available as well. Please let your server know if you are in need of gluten-free wafers. serve a God who is good. Even when we feel like we are in the middle of the wilderness. So go from this place, but not from the presence of God, knowing that you know that you know that you are loved and adored and strengthened for this journey. Rise and go in peace.
Has everybody who wishes to partake been able to? Let stand and sing this closing hymn of the church, this great hymn of the church. And, um, and as we sing this hymn, we open the doors of the church and extend the opportunity to join God in this Christian faith, to make a first time profession of faith or to join with this community. This is the time. This is the season. After all, we serve a God who draws water from a rock. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Oh. One day when he died upon the cross and I know it was the blood for me. Friends, this is the good news. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. And that means that there is nothing we can do to stop God. Go forth from this place, but not from the presence of God, knowing that you serve the miracle master, that God is with you, and that all is well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.